that's one of the thoughts I had when I when mm-hmm. I started thinking of thinking of myself as being transgender yep. was well I don't I don't want to be a gay man I was disgusted by it and I said I would rather be I would rather transition to a girl that that is straight I mean I regret my bottom surgery absolutely because we were on blockers and hormones so we didn't we're develop eliminated. enough in our pelvic floor and so we had to rely on the other alternatives and that was how I ended up with the experimental one that I had done this one is deep no pun intended sorry sit down buckle up it is time for an internal look pun intended this time at a trans woman's journey to transitioning bottom surgery self-inflection and potential regret the main reason I want to talk about this specific trans woman's story is because believing that rejection and male disapproval might be the origin and cause of her dysphoria and I find that to be the case with most people today taking on a trans identity basically a ton of potential internalized homophobia going on so my name is Brianna I'm currently 22 and I identify and I live as a transgender woman so I am biological male but I present as a female I live my life socially as one, Mm -hmm. um, really in all aspects. And that's definitely something that even though I am critical of a lot of aspects of our activism, I still do feel that I am most comfortable living and looking like female. I specifically want to talk to you about the Mm -hmm. Substack article that you wrote. Yeah. Because that was, girl, that was intense. I personally believe that, of course, not everybody, but a good amount of people that would have just simply been homosexual are transitioning for a number of reasons, internalized homophobia, um, sexual trauma. That article was really important to me because I think that in a lot of the trans community, there's this refusal to ever question where someone's gender identity could come from, if they have dysphoria or not, there's really no, there's really no ground to have a conversation about it. And I think it's a big disservice. And that's something that I push myself to do now that I'm older. I want to go back and look at everything that happened and where this could have came from. Because a big point for me and when I was so young starting to transition was that I was told by looking at trans people online and other other influential things that it, the mind was fine. It was the body that was wrong. And so the body needed to be dressed and the body needed to be modified to correct itself. But as I got older, I realized this happens in our brain. If it's a, it's a mental disorder and it happens in our brain. And so I want to challenge myself to look back and what was I thinking during that time and what was happening in my life? And a big theme was the fact that I did not have any male acceptance in my life. I, my father was very distant, wasn't around very much, and he was very much disapproved of me being feminine. He did not like gay people at all. My stepfather after that was abusive and he felt the same way. I had really bad experiences with boys. I was bullied a lot. And so it was constant. The only safe acceptance and the only place I felt welcomed was with other girls and other women. Which is also very typical of, it's very typical of of gay men and of trans women, right? It could be, it could be either, which is why it could be very confusing for people like yourself. Before we get any more into this video, I want to say a big thank you to my friend Lucas's film production company. He recently produced a film called 5,000 Space Aliens. It is absolutely bizarre. It's an experience, really. It is up for a ton of awards and is being featured at a ton of film festivals across the country. Here's a little sneak peek of it. If you want to go and check it out along with other films that Lucas has produced, you can click the link in the description below. It is currently available on all streaming platforms. Of course, like I, I went through all of my development as, as a teenager and puberty in the middle of being transitioned. So it makes sense that I feel the most comfortable like this. But I think it's really worth addressing. Why is it that there was so much disapproval from all the men around me and so much rejection? And then somehow I ended up rejecting myself at being a biological boy. And I couldn't see myself being an adult man or being an adult gay man. I was really disgusted by the idea of being a gay man. I feel like the best option was for me to transition to being a straight female. I regret how fast it all was and how intense. And the fact that I 
was being presented with so many medical options and everything happened so quickly, all because we were told that the faster you do it and the younger you do it, the better you'll look, the better your life will be, the better you'll be treated. This was told to myself and my family. And, and you, so you it have just a lot like to say only... about that, right? You have, you have a yeah. very, very important message for young kids that are potentially, or just people that are raising young kids. And yes, about absolutely. the fact that we're fast tracking these kids. It was when I first had blockers and then went on to hormones. I was 14 years old. Right. And now I see so much conversation and advocating for all these children to transition, that it's life saving. And I saw no one that actually lived all of it as a child really talk about it. So that's why I talk about it now because I was making choices and taking medications and doing things and I didn't fully even comprehend. So when I was first given blockers and hormones, it was a 30 minute conversation with a social worker. I didn't even talk about the things that were going on in my childhood. I didn't talk about the fact that I had mental health problems my entire childhood. Yeah. I was just told it's, it's right brain, wrong body. And so we're going to correct the body. That entire time, three years after I started, I, I fully passed. Why did I still have so many mental health problems? Oh, it's because I didn't have surgery. And so all these surgeries were available in the clinic. I started having plastic surgeries done. I still have mental health problems. And so now it's bottom surgery because I just kept feeling like the reason why I'm unhappy is because my body because is because of this, this one thing. And once I have that one thing, I'm going to be happy. And yeah, unfortunately, and, and sometimes that is the case, but sometimes it's not. These, these people are really suffering and, and these stories are happening more and more. And I feel like it's my job in this lifetime to eliminate as much suffering as I can. If you had more time and if they dealt with you in a more lengthy way that you would have just simply been a gay guy? Or do you think that you do, do you believe that you do have gender dysphoria and it, and it was a good choice for you to transition or a little bit of both? Yeah, I think it's honestly a little bit of both. It's so hard because I started transitioning like completely when I was 13. And so now That's insane, by the way. having been almost in 10 years, I'm almost going to be 10 years transitioned. I I've now developed into it. So I feel comfortable like this, but I think it's very fair. And I think about this a lot. I question it. And I recognize the fact that I was so young that if I had had a different approach that I had mental health care and like therapy throughout all of it, I re I really could have accepted myself as a gay man and could have lived a, a happy life like that. The way they talk about transition is, oh, would you rather have a trans daughter or a dead son? That was that was from the moment my family and I were in the clinic. There was this sense of urgency that I was, and I was already still struggling with so many mental health problems that if I didn't go through with this, this is the solution, then it's there's really no hope. I didn't even know of this until later on that the doctor had privately called my, my parents and my, my mom, my stepdad and said, they were concerned. They were like, she is still really depressed. After all of this transition, she's still really unhappy. Is this right. surgery really going to fix it? And they said, yes. Yeah. They said this will, they said, don't worry about that. And the surgeon said, I see this all the time. I see it all the time. Once she has a surgery, she'll be fine. We need gatekeeping for this very reason, right? Yeah. And this is really common. You see it in a lot of stories of detransitioners or even other trans people. There was, there's a very common theme that they were, they were surrounded by a, a culture of homophobia. The way that the LGBT community and I feel like activism has responded to that is to transition. I just think it's really backwards. I think it's backwards from how hard that people have worked for yeah. so long to try and dismantle those stereotypes that we all have to live in. But yet when it comes to, to being trans, they, they, they go right back into it again. Yep. And when a boy has some feminine traits or a girl has masculine traits, trans that means transition. If you regret any, what surgeries do you regret? Because the good thing, well, the good thing about HRT is you can kind of go backwards a little bit. So, like in, mm -hmm. in certain cases, you know, specifically if you're yeah. if you're born mm -hmm. male, it's easier to just let your body have like testosterone take take over your body again. Mm -hmm. Like no longer do that, right? Because you had your balls removed. Yeah, uh, I so, did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's my biggest regret is really just the approach more than anything. I mean, I regret my bottom surgery absolutely because I was and and what happened to me is very similar to what happened to Jazz. We both oh, were oh, unable yes. to have the very, or we were both unable to have the traditional form of the surgery because we were on blockers and hormones. So we didn't really develop enough in our pelvic floor. Yep. 
And so we had to rely on the other alternatives. And that was how I ended up with the experimental one that I had done. And my biggest regret is that entire process. I, I wasn't given enough information. I had no idea that this surgery, that my technique had only been done for about two years. I, I just wasn't presented with enough information. And I, there was so much downplayed of the risks because I was so young and saying that this will help me. It'll make me less depressed. I'll feel better. I'll heal better because I'm young. And that was the complete opposite. In reality, the, when young people who have been on hormones and blockers do this, they have so many complications just because of the way that their body development changed because they didn't go through natural puberty and sexual development. Right. And that, so that's my biggest regret in terms of transition specifically is that entire procedure that really woke me up to the idea of what have I been doing? And I've just been chasing after something when in reality, I've had mental health problems this whole time. And I thought that completely modifying my external appearance would fix it. But yeah, I'm 10 years into transition. Why am I still having these mental health struggles? I think that we're doing, I think it was a disservice to me, but it's a disservice to all trans people, especially younger ones that want to transition to not do this. Because no one in all the advocacy that I see, and I'm very critical of it, why is no one talking about the therapy part? We're just talking about the hormones and the blockers and Yep. taking and like they need to take their medicine and it's their right to transition why is no one even bringing up therapy at all once when in, if you look at a lot of trans people there's a lot of mental problems that go on in this community I don't mean that to insult anybody no that's but it's just that's a groups. really big thing that's happening it's that's a very vulnerable group of people mentally yeah oh yeah I'm so glad you guys stayed until the end of the video if you did enjoy it which I know you did give it a big thumbs up and again, subscribe to this channel if you have not already. And I will see you guys back here on Sunday with a brand new video that you're going to absolutely love. I'll talk to you guys then. Keep calling out the bullshit. Bye!